Hey folks, today I am going to add some mohair, well, viscous hair, to this little purple unicorn. Um, the hair color was chosen by the person who asked me to paint this little, little one. Um, I bought this off of Etsy, and actually, um, I should take that back. This was purchased by a fellow artist and we shared um, we shared the expense of the purchase and she sent me half of it because there's a lot of hair <laughs> for um, stable mates. Uh, you probably could use it on larger horses but the fiber is really fine. Um, I like it for these little guys. It's a little more in scale. Um, this is a fantasy piece so I'm, I'm okay with it being a little more on the shiny side. Uh, but overall, um, the client chose this here because it has some really nice tones in it. And I'm going to try to focus on pulling areas of this with the different shades of blues and the purples and have it blend in very nicely with this piece. And I think it's going to look really great. So the first thing I am going to do is work on the tail. Um, I find doing the tail first and then the mane later because I could wrap the tail up um, in some foil to keep it safe and clean while I work on uh, the, the other part of the horse. Um, because this is so tiny, uh, I was a little leery of doing a slot on the neck. So in this case, I am going to use the Rio Rondo method and just lay little swatches up the crest and I'll show you how to do that. But first let's work on the tail. So my materials, obviously you need a scissors for cutting, you need your mohair or viscous, whatever fiber you're using. Um, Etsy I'm finding is a great source for different fibers. Uh, you can get alpaca, um, wool, whatever kind of fiber you can imagine. Mohair is usually the most commonly used on larger scale models. However, uh, Surrey alpaca is a finer, um, finer kind of mohair, and it can be used on smaller scale. But in this case, we uh, we're going with the viscous, which is, I believe, a plant-based fiber. Um, and then obviously, you need some glue. So I am using. Aliens Tacky Glue. I've had good luck with this. And I am not in any way promoting any particular brand, but for me, this has worked pretty well over the years. Um, so within this video, I'll show you how to mohair, um, add hair to this model. And then, um, I'll show you how to care for it as well because I don't know if a lot of people really know how to truly care for a haired model once it's done. Uh, people do worry about dust um, or even if you need to kind of freshen it up with a little combing. In this case I'm not going to be adding any kind of um, styling products to it. This is just going to be wild and crazy. All right. So let me get started. So in this case, I am going to pull some swatches of hair. And like I said, I do want to try to get some of the different colors that have been dyed into this hair and mix some of it up. I want to try to save some of it for the mane as well. So if you look within here, there's all kinds of shades. So I'm going to pull a little of each. And I am trying to pull some of the longer fibers. When I've done some of my Okapi equines in the past, I had kept really long manes and tails on them. Just the way I, I liked to do them, I figure as a fantasy piece, I wanted something wild and crazy. And I am a girl of the 80s. And big hair was very typical in my youth. So for me, I'm kind of sticking with it. 
but obviously once I have it all haired up, I can inquire with the client and if they want me to shorten it, I certainly can. I did one piece for her before and she wanted me to leave it. So in this case, for this little one, I have some swatches and I'm going to try to pull some of the loose hair. So I'm kind of mixing a little bit of the fiber and pull, just pulling it. You can comb it if that is the way you want to go. But I just find sometimes just pulling the fibers and bringing them back together is sufficient enough. It is going to get combed out. You will lose a lot of hair uh, once it is all done, but then it should be pretty good to go after that. So I'm kind of holding now an end of it and I'm pulling on the fiber. I'm not getting too much loose coming with what I'm pulling. So I think that's pretty well done. And I am going to snip an end. Hopefully my scissor is sharp enough. Make sure your scissors is sharp. I have some, that's kind of important. All right, what I'm going to do is I have an end and what I prefer to do is to take some of my glue and glue the end and let it set for a second. And sometimes holding the glue upside down is helpful. So I'm putting a lot of glue on there and it seems like an awful lot, but that's okay. I use my fingers and I just kind of mush the glue into there. So I now have an end, have paper towel handy for your gluey fingers because you don't want that getting all over your model. And I'm just kind of letting this set for a second. And then what I'm going to do is trim a little bit of that glued area off just to kind of neaten the ends. I'm going to add a little glue again and I'm just kind of adding just enough. I don't want to soak it just enough and then I'm going to add this to the end of the tail. And as you can see, I'm kind of patting it down. And I'm going to let that set. So this can be a little time consuming. Be aware of that, but work slowly. Don't rush it. All right, so I'm going to let that set for a minute. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prep some of these pieces that I'm going to use next. And sometimes I come at these in different ways. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling that day. Sometimes I take some swatches and I go and I'll cut my end and then lay it along the side and lay another one on the side. And then I'll add hair over the top to can to blend in and camouflage everything. I am going to be leaving the underside of the tail as it would be in real life. And I'm going to pause here and I'm going to go into a little time lapse because this is this does take quite a while. So you get an idea, you get a feel for it. And you can always ask questions if, if I went too fast.
All right, I'm going to take a break here. And as you saw me doing, I was working the hair where I have it along the edge on each side. And it is granted it is a little messy, so I'm kind of as, using my fingernail to kind of position it a little bit. I was also using an X-Acto knife very carefully, just kind of pushing the hair. I'm trying to curve this up to blend in with the end and again this is going to be a bit messy until I really get this where I want it but right now I want to let the glue set a little bit and then as it firms up I, I'm going to pull this these ends up a little bit more so that it kind of blends in with the piece that I put at the very end of the tail and already you can start seeing how this is gonna look. Um, again, it is messy. This will get cleaned up in the end, but right now I wanna let this set a bit. So, pause. Okay, so we're back and I've let the glue dry. And before it dried, completely what I did was I used my fingernail and just kind of pushed the hair so that it met up nicer with the piece that I had put on the end so you should have something that looks like this and if I were to separate this out you would see just like on a real horse the tailbone there so this looks kind of messy, but it will come together. I do promise that. So what I want to do now is start taking some little swatches of my hair. Definitely not this much, but you want to make little bits that will now cover over this. And You'll work it down, down the tail, all the way down. So you're kind of making almost like semicircles, if that makes any kind of sense. You're gonna um, push the hair onto the tail from the top and let it kind of drape over in almost like an arch over this all right let me get a piece and i can show you what i mean and let's see what colors do i have so far let's maybe take some of the again i'm kind of looking at some of the colors in this particular mix of hair and seeing what I might want to blend in on top. Maybe I'm going to take some of the dark. All right, so I'm going to pull a swatch of this. And I'm not afraid to lose any. There's plenty of hair to work with. Um, this might even be too much still. I'm going to go a little smaller than this. And again, you want to work slow. Don't rush. Take your time. And it is indeed a process. No, actually, I do want a piece that's a little bigger than that. So I think I might take some of this lighter color. Blend it in. A lot of this, too, is just seeing what is feeling right. I'm just going to mix a little of it. 
I'm going to pull my ends. Whoops. That's why I'm using this little foam. As if he does. If my horse does topple over a bit, it's got a nice little cushion. I'm going to probably go to Michael's again and get. They have some that are a little bit thicker. This is um, very thin, but it's it's enough of a cushion. And I do apologize. My hands keep going off camera. I have the my phone in front of me, so it's a little awkward. I'm trying to see around my phone. This is hysterical. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim the ends. And like I did before, I'm gonna, that wasn't really a clean cut. You can do better. All right, so I've got a nice edge and I'm gonna put some glue on it. And then trim it again. And then I'll fit it onto the top of the tail. So I'm being fairly generous with the bit of glue. I really want to kind of soak the ends, let it really get through the hair. It'll help it hold together. And like I said, have paper towel nearby because this is very messy, at least the way I do it. I never do anything neat. What fun is that? Gotta be able to make a mess. All right, so I'm just letting this set for a second. Just so it kind of sets just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut, get a nice clean edge. So I'm leaving, oh, I don't know. Maybe an eighth of an inch. Maybe like three centimeters for my folks that use the metric system. And then I'm going to put a little bead of glue <clears throat> on the edge. Sorry, voice is going. <clears throat> and I'm going to lay this on top. And it's a matter of working the hair where it will cover your gluey spot on the side and then marry in nicely with the rest of it. So I'm kind of, oops, off the camera again. Donna, watch what you're doing. All right, so you see I'm using my nails and I'm kind of shaping it around the end of the tail. I'm bringing it down. So it's not only going over the end, we're kind of feathering it in on top, coming around the side a little bit. And of course, one side's coming up better than the other, but that's okay. As you work your way down, it's all gonna work out nicely in the end. All right, so. So 
So you see how I'm kind of bringing this hair around the side. And you are going to lose some. Don't be afraid that you're pulling it out. There is plenty here that it will not make a difference. And so that's going to stay. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm happy with that right now. And I'm just going to use my finger to just kind of flatten it a little bit. And then you'll proceed down. In a very similar fashion. So your next layer will go a little bit more in front of this. You'll f like arc, arc it around the tail. It will cover not only what you placed here, but what's on the side. Because as as this lays down, this is going to cover. It's going to cover the sides here. All right. I'm going to try to reposition my camera so that it's up over my workstation. Maybe this will allow you to see better. All right, so again, I'm just kind of carefully working the hair. So you can see how this first layer on top is covering the end. Oops. This side is not playing as nice, but that's okay. It will all blend in. All right, I'm gonna let that set for a second before I continue. And while that is sitting, I need to get some purple. I need some more purple in there. There wasn't a whole lot of the purple in there, lots of blues. That's where it's still going to be pretty. No, I might want to leave that piece for the main. I need to have some of the purple for the main, so I may just go with the blues. A little bit of the purple here. It is messy, but that's the fun of it. some of the darker oops that's what happens when you have glue on your fingers everything sticks and again I'm not too terribly worried about little clumps because when I brush it out later but I don't want big chunks of here falling out so I'm holding the end and I'm pulling carefully and some of that is going to come out and I'm going to stick it back there all right so I'm going to prepare my next piece while that is setting up This is a little too much here. I'm going to pull some of this off because I don't want a whole lot of it. I'm going to leave that for the next piece. 
All right, that's not too bad. All right, so I'm gonna glue the end. And again, I'm being generous. Nice dollop of glue. I'm working it through the fiber with my fingers. Ew. And then I will go through the same thing. I'm going to cut the ends after that sets for a second. And you can actually start pulling these so that they will kind of drape a little easier over the tail. Just don't want this to get on the body body because I don't want it to ruin the finish. So now I'm going a little bit more in front of the piece I laid down before. And then again using my fingers and I'm gonna drape it down. Carefully pushing it down. If you don't have fingernails, mine, I don't have very much for fingernails. You can use a toothpick. You can use um, uh, any kind of little stylus or sculpting tool that maybe you're not sculpting with or you don't mind it getting some glue on it. Anything that will just help you kind of manipulate the hair a bit. So you can kind of see how this is arched around. It's also covering over my last layer. So that's basically how I do a tail. And, I, and this would even be for a traditional model or classic, any size that um, you may want to do mohair on. I do basically the same procedure. So while that's setting, I'm going to get my next swatch ready and I will keep going until I reach the end of, well, the base of the tail. And then I'll show you what I do with that to try to minimize how much glue is actually showing. All right, I'm going to go on time lapse so you can see the rest of this. Okay, so I've more or less reached the base of the tail and I'm probably going to get one or two more swatches on there. You can see where the tailbone is showing here and the gluey end is showing more here. So I want to kind of blend this in, but one thing I want to do right now is I, like I was no, no, no. Don't pull on this at this point because this glue is setting and I don't want to yank each of the little hanks off while it's setting. So I did use my X-Acto just to kind of brush some of the pieces and just to kind of blend it more so that it was draping a little nicer over the top of the tail. 
So I'm going to let this set and let this dry overnight. And then tomorrow when I get home from work, I will finish this piece and more or less is just draping some additional, uh, maybe one or two swatches and just being really careful. I just want to reach to the dock of the tail, just like on a real horse. But I want to blend this all in and cover it as best as I can with as minimal glue as I can so that you don't have a big dry wad of glue showing. I want that to look as, I mean, at least for me, I want to try to keep it as realistic as possible. Um, so we're going to stop here and then we'll pick up with completing that. That will be the end for the tail. I'll wrap this up so that I can go on to part two and that'll be doing the main. Okay, so at this point, I have let what I have put on the tail dry thoroughly. I am not gonna comb any of this out. That'll happen as the very last part, but you can see where I am at now. I've pretty much covered the majority of the tail. I may put one more swatch in place before I actually um, put in the last part. So I have some hair ready and I'm going to follow through with that in just a moment. So I think with this, I have a little bit more that's white, more of the white lights and light blues and white and some purple in there. So I think I'm going to use this swatch and I'm just going to pull out some of those loose hairs and prepare this one. Oops. All right. Get my scissors. And I'm just going to trim the majority of the loose ends that are not even. Get rid of that little piece. All right. So again, I'm going to put glue on the top. Again, I'm not uh, getting any sponsorship or anything from Aliens. Is this is the glue that I just happen to be using over the years, and it's worked well for me. So I'm not, you know, if there's something better out there, go for it. So I'm putting a nice dollop of glue on the end, and just like I've done before, just using my fingers to push it through the fibers. I'm just going to let it set for a moment as I clean my fingers off of glue. All right, I'm going to trim the end and I'm leaving a little bit. And then I'm going to put a dab, a little bit of glue over the top. Seems like double work, but for me, again, this is just the way I've been doing it. It's what's worked for me. Other people may have a different way. All right, so again, I'm going on the top, covering what I put before. And I am getting a little closer to the dock of the tail, which is good, so I'm probably gonna have just one more swatch. So I am just gonna maneuver this around a bit. And I'm using my nails to help press it down, bringing the hair around. And you just want to carefully manipulate the hair. I do apologize. I'm trying to keep this in frame, but I'm so if, if I've gone off frame on any of this, I do apologize. I'm trying to keep this as close 
in view for you. But also so I can see what I'm doing. And I don't want to pull too much because I don't want the hair coming off the tail. So if you've got a little more on one side, it's all right. It'll it'll work itself out. Although I, I do try my best to kind of evenly distribute it over the top. Um, if you don't want to use your fingers with the glue, you can certainly use something like the end of a dull X-Acto knife or if you have an old sculpting tool that you're not using for sculpting anymore or a toothpick, anything of that nature will help you do this. And I know this seems like it's taking forever, but I just feel if you work slow, your results will show. All right, and I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna let this set now. I want this to dry pretty thoroughly. I'll come back maybe in an hour when that's had time to really set up. Doesn't have to be dry dry, but enough where it's really holding. And I'm not going all the way around the tail, just kind of covering that top part. So I have enough space here now where I'm probably going to just put on one more piece and that'll go right to the dock of the tail. And I think that will be it for the tail. Um, I will say now that this once I do that, that will be the end of this first video. I will do the main as a whole separate video. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll come back in about an hour and just show you how I'm going to finish up the tail. Okay, so I lied. I'm going to go ahead and just do that last section. Um, with this one here, the way I do this a little bit differently than the others, um, I do prep the very, you know, very same way, put some glue on, you know, mush the glue through all the fiber, let it set for a second, and then I cut my edge. Now this one, I am going to put my glue on, but I tried to cut a little smaller a gluey edge if that makes any sense let me get this on here and then I'll show you um, I want enough glue to hold the pieces together hold it on the body but not have a big wad of glue at the top of the tail whoops if that can make any sense let me see if I can get this on here um, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that I don't want this to just be a big mush of glue if I can possibly help it. So I'm just trying to have just enough on there at the top of the tail. And as you can see, I've gotten it on the body. Not cool. So I am using my fingers. And the top of my nail. And I'm pushing this hair around. But I just really want this just at the very top of the tail. So I'm going to push it down right to the dock. I will clean that up a bit because I don't want it on the body. And I'm trying to camouflage as much as I can. so that it looks like the hair is actually growing out of the tail. And I don't have a big water dry glue. And the nice thing I found with Aileen's 
blue is that when it does dry, it is clear. It doesn't seem to discolor the hair. And I'm gonna try to clean that up a little bit. So I do have some, some glue that got into the hair itself and that's okay, I'll just comb that out later. I'm just trying to push this right to the dock of the tail. And of course, if looking at pictures of rail horses is a help, you can kind of see how the hair grows out. So, and if I really feel I need to, if I feel that isn't going to dry the way I want, I may stick one little teeny bit over there because I have a little bit of glue that is a little too much in there. So I may stick one more tiny swatch on there to camouflage that. Actually, I might be able to do that right now. Just grab a little extra hair. Oh, this purple piece is nice. Let's see, let me just take some of this. I'm just gonna trim the end. I'm not putting any glue at the top on this one. Because I want this to actually get in there and soak up some of that excess glue. Get in there. All right, here we go. So I just have a bare end. Get that in there. And I'm just using a little bit of hair, just enough to kind of get in there and soak up that excess glue. So sometimes I do things like that and you just go with it. And then as this all gets combed out too, it'll neaten it up. All right, not too bad. Any of these little excess ones that don't belong, I'll get out of there. And obviously do this carefully because you don't want to ruin your paintwork. The other nice thing of doing the paintwork ahead of time, sealing, because the body itself will have some protection from any of those little oopsies. Okay, kind of liking that now. You see, it's fairly clean, it's really close to the body, and this will all get neatened up later. Okay, so that's herring a stable mate tail. And obviously, once this is all thoroughly dry, you can um, cut and shape however you want. Um, this little lady will have a very long, wild tail and mane. Um, as I've done my other fantasy pieces like these. So, there's the tail. So video two will be on the main and forelock, and I'll do that separately after this is totally dry. Until the next time, thank you for watching.